That's right, you're watching Traders Corner with me, Bronwyn Seaborn, and joining me at the desk as usual for our weekly look at the charts is Garth McKenzie, editor and founder of Traders Corner. Garth, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks. Hi, Bronwyn. So it seems to be a bit of a wait-and-see game with those second-quarter earnings from the U.S. Um, coming out, and that's likely to give the S&P 500 some direction, right? Yeah, it should do, we would think. Um, this is now the start of second-quarter earnings season this week. Uh, today we've got J.P. Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, and Wells. Wells Fargo, so some of the big banking stocks there reporting. Um, what's quite interesting to note, though, is that the expectation for earnings now for the second quarter is actually a decline in earnings for, this, for the broader S&P 500 relative to the first quarter. Um, and notwithstanding that fact, we've got a market that is now at a new all-time high. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there. So it does say to you, well, what is the market expecting? I mean, is it placing more weight on the likelihood that we're going to get a rate cut now in end of July from the Fed? Um, or is it, you know, saying that this earnings um, slump that we're going to see now in the second quarter is just short term and it's going to quickly be unwound in future quarters? Now, if we look at the graph of the technical, uh, technical graph of the S&P 500 here, um, I've gone on repeatedly about the fact that the break above 2950 was a bullish break, and it's now gone on and moved beyond 3000. Last week when we were on the show, we said it was testing 3000, but it hadn't quite got there yet. It is now through that 3000 round figure. And, um, but what's, what's also just interesting to note is the pattern that's forming at the moment appears like it's a bit of a rising wedge. Now, I'm always wary of, of calling a rising wedge into a new high like that, because often you can call that a running wedge and it can keep going. But just notice that it is fairly similar to what we saw back in March and April of this year, and that one eventually did break to the downside. And often you will find these rising wedge patterns do tend to break to the downside. So I think just be cognizant of that in the light of the fact that we are expecting somewhat weaker earnings out of the S&P 500 now in this reporting period. And it's, if, if there is weakness in those numbers, the market may well actually break out the bottom of that rising wedge pattern just to consolidate a little bit. Um, the counter argument to that, of course, could be that the market's expecting weaker numbers already, and it's, it's in the price. So, what is, in, yeah. so is there not a potential for a squeeze to the upside, maybe if, if the numbers are not as bad as expected? So it's an interesting situation we place ourselves in at the moment. Uh, just in terms of the weekly graph of the S&P 500, I keep bringing this back as well. It's right up at the top of this broader megaphone structure that has been forming over the last 18 months. So just keep that in the back of your mind as well. There is a bit of resistance here just above 3,000 where we're trading at the moment. And if the market were to reverse down off that level, it might actually spark a little bit of a pullback as well. But it's not to say that it definitely will. I, I'm just putting it out there and saying, you know, th this market right now is making new all-time highs, which is bullish, but we do have the potential for some negative earnings to come out. And we've got a market that's pushing up against fairly big resistance on the longer term chart over there. So just keep your eye out because anything could happen and just got to play it safe, I guess, and you do. be prepared. Yeah, you do. You do. I mean, it's broadly bullish at the moment, but just as I say, be aware of chasing this market, this S&P 500, too aggressively at these levels. Yeah, it's always a temptation. But if we come back home, uh, what are you seeing when you look at the top 40? Right, so last week uh, we spoke about the head and shoulders pattern that had formed on the top 40. You can see it quite clearly indicated over there. The break below the 52,000 neckline was the bearish break to the downside. And at that stage I said that move would target a move down to 50,800. It reached that level with precision last week and then it seems to have stabilized around there. It now is bumbling around at the 50-day moving average, which is that red line over there. Also note that in terms of your Fibonacci retracements, if we take that rally from middle of May up until middle of June, we've now retraced 50% of that rally. It's battling a little bit to stick around this 50% retracement area. If it were to break down below the 50% retracement, then chances are it'll go to the 618 percent retracement, which is at about 50,400 or there and thereabouts. So just keep it, keep it in mind. But, you know, we have seen the market coming back a fair amount over the last couple of weeks, and it has consolidated. So I think we've got to keep an eye to see round about this area where it is right now, whether that support zone holds at the 50 percent retracement um, and if it can move higher from there. So again, it's, it, it could kind of go either way, but I'm just highlighting the significant levels that we need to look for in terms of possible market direction here. Okay, so that's the broad markets picture. Let's revisit some of your recent trades, starting off with Amazon, because that's really worked out quite nicely for us. Yes, it has. Finally, we've actually had some breakthrough in terms of this offshore portfolio, which we haven't done a lot on this year, but this has actually turned out to be our best trade of the year. So how things can move quite quickly and change. 
Uh, what I spoke about a few weeks back was this little triangular pattern that had begun to form whilst the Amazon share price was consolidating above the 50-day moving average there. That then eventually did break to the upside, which is what I was expecting. We went long of seven CFDs here at $1,889 per share. And we were looking for a move initially to 1960 which is that prior top that we saw in early May. Now, last week on the show, I said I was tempted to take some profits at that level because we've, you know, we've been stung a few times this year by trying to run profits and then things have bitten us back. Um, but what happened on the show effectively, or well, after the show aired last week, Tuesday, was that the share price of Amazon opened up very strong and it just surged ahead straight off the bat. And it went beyond our target at, at 1,960. So at that stage, I thought, okay, well, look, it's through the target level already. Let's just run it. And if it pulls back and goes below 1,960, we will run a trailing stop loss below that level. I stuck to that theme uh, throughout the whole of last week. But lo eventually, when it formed a bit of a bearish reversal uh, last week on Thursday, I decided that that was our cue to actually exit this trade. We've done very nicely out of it. So I sold out at $2,007.50. So quite a nice move beyond what we were actually looking for. Yeah. And that meant that we locked in a profit there of $826 on this trade. So it's, you know, in terms of uh, percentage of our capital, that's probably about 6 or 7% growth on our offshore U.S. capital base just on that one trade. So it's really been a great trade. And as I said, it's been our best trade of the year, actually. A really great trade. One that's not looking too good, though, is our local trade, and that's in Mr. Price. So let's take a look at what you're seeing there. Yeah, so here's, here's the Mr. Price chart that we spoke about last week. And what I'd said that there was this head and shoulders pattern, which looked as if it was beginning to break to the downside. And the fact that it was in a generally declining trend gave me sort of confidence that it was likely to move lower. It did break to the downside, but it didn't actually stay down for very long. Um, we went short of some CFDs at 198 Rand 30 here. I'm looking at a stop loss above 205 Rand, which is actually being flirted with today as yeah. we speak. Um, my target here was 180 Rand down basically at these lows from March and, and again in May. Um, and that doesn't look as if it's going to materialize at this point in time. So there's a possibility that we might actually get stopped out here. And if we do, then, well, that's, that's trading. Sometimes that happens. Um, but broadly speaking, I must say that, that that overall chart structure to me still doesn't actually look great. It's still making lower highs the whole time. Um, it's in a broader downtrend. So given that that's the case, I still probably would favor a slightly bearish view here. But, you know, rules are rules. If our stop loss gets breached, we will close that trade. And we've always defined our risk right up front when we enter a trade. We know what we're willing to lose. And if it goes past the stop loss, we get out and move on to the next thing. Yeah, rules are rules, but it's no um, hard and fast rule that you can't keep an eye on it to see what else develops. So, yeah. But while we wait for Mr. Price and see what happens on that front, you are keeping an eye on Coca-Cola. Yeah. Um, so tell us what you... Um looking at this. Yeah, so this is the chart of Coca-Cola listed in New York, and it's quite a bullish technical structure. You can see that it's in a nice upward channel over there. Quite clearly, uh, every time the price pulls back to this lower trend line, it seems to be finding support. What you can see over the past few days is that all of these candlestick patterns have been forming long tails to the downside, which implies that there is buying interest at the lower levels. Uh, there seems to be a series of flat tops through, the, through all these recent highs over the last three weeks, which comes in at around about $52.20 or thereabouts. If it starts to break up above that $52.20 area, then I think that would be a bullish break, and likelihood is you would then see it pushing on to, to go higher still and possibly up towards the upper boundary of the channel. So I think it's worthwhile watching that for a possible breakout. And if it does break through that area, then I think it's worth actually buying that break. And then you would just put a stop loss below the bottom boundary of this general upward channel. Okay, so we're keeping an eye on Coca-Cola. Let's take a look at the portfolios and see how Amazon and Mr. Price are playing themselves out there. Yeah, so our Mr. Price short position has taken a nasty swing in the opposite direction for us. Last week, we had a nice mark-to-market profit there. Now we're sitting with a mark-to-market loss of about 2,100 Rand. So that means that our, uh, our local portfolio has come off a bit. We're, we're up just shy of 3% for the year to date there. So slow going. Um, and then our offshore portfolio is suddenly looking better uh, after that nice profit that we made on Amazon. You can see we sold out at $2,007 there, as I mentioned. We made $826 profit on that trade. And that single trade has swung us from a loss-making position on the year 
all the way into a 3.5% profit for this year. So it's been quite a nice turnaround on that offshore portfolio and it's at least feels better to be on the right side of the ledger now. It always does, doesn't it? It does indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, Garth, you do have a course coming up as well on the 3rd of August. Um, if you just want to know more about that, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so 3rd of August in Johannesburg, it's my high probability trading course. Anyone that's interested in attending that can email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za. I must just stress that this is going to be the last course that I will offer in South Africa. Uh, the reason being I'm going to be relocating to the UK from August and um, I will be running my Traders Corner business from the UK. Unfortunately, not the Traders Corner TV show. Yeah. That's going to uh, move on to a digital platform and I'll continue to run the Traders Corner show, but in a digital format. I've still got to decide how that's going to work, uh, but it's, it's, it's seeking to try and freshen it up, look at more offshore ideas. So I'm quite excited about the prospects for that. Unfortunately, it does mean that this is our third last show on Business Day TV recording uh, Traders Corner, uh, and it's been 10 years of Traders Corner. In fact, August 2009 was when Jeez. we started. Yeah, so, so come August, it's gonna have been exactly 10 years that we've been doing this on Business Day TV. And uh, it's now time for me to move on to new things, and that's what I'm gonna be doing in the UK. Well, we're definitely going to be sad to see you go, Garth. But if the viewers do want to follow um, your progress, they want to get onto your new platform, they still want to keep up to date with how you're seeing the markets, they can, of course, um, sign up for the free newsletter as well, right? Yeah, that's right. If you go to traderscorner.co.za and you go to the middle of the page there, you'll see there's a link to select a free weekly email. It's quick and easy to sign up. And what we'll do is send you an email every Tuesday detailing what we're discussing on the show that week. And I'll obviously use that mailing list as a vehicle to communicate with uh, our followers going forward in terms of the developments that we're seeking to achieve with Traders Corner into the future. Garth, it's always a pleasure chatting to you. This will unfortunately be our last show together as Juliet is back next week to take you through the last two episodes of Traders Corner as well. So a big thank you from my side for your contribution. Yeah, thank you, Bronwyn, and thanks for all your assistance. And I've enjoyed uh, sparring with you on, yes. on, the, on the table ac across the platform over the years. I'm never too sure who's actually in the hot seat here, me or you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been good together. Great. Garth, thanks as always for your time. Garth McKenzie is editor and founder of Traders Corner.